five, four, three, two, one. Go for launch. Are you dreaming of going to Mars and beyond? Well, wake up, because space travel is a nightmare. It can ruin your existence in more ways than you can imagine. In this video, we'll explain how space can wreck your body and mind, and what NASA and SpaceX is trying to do to fix these issues. Warning, it's not pretty. Let's start with your body. One of the most obvious effects of space travel is the loss of bone and muscle mass, because when you're floating around in microgravity, your bones and muscles get lazy. They don't have to work hard to keep you upright and moving, so they start to shrink and get weaker over time. NASA says that astronauts can lose up to 1% of their bone density per month in space. That's like having super osteoporosis, and that's bad news for your bones, especially if you want to land on a planet like Mars, where the gravity is only about 38% of Earth's. Imagine trying to walk on Mars after spending months in space. You might as well say goodbye to your skeleton and hello to your jellyfish body. You'll probably break your bones or collapse like a ragdoll. To prevent this, astronauts have to exercise for at least two hours a day in space, using special equipment like treadmills, bikes, and resistance bands. But even with exercise, they still lose some bone and muscle mass, and they have to undergo a long recovery process when they return to Earth first get to space we feel sick your body's really confused and so you know you're dizzy your your lunch is floating around in your belly cuz you're floating another point to consider is your body fluids will go crazy in space you see on earth gravity is like a bully that constantly pushes your blood and other fluids down to your lower body but in space there's no gravity to boss them around so they rebel and shift upwards causing a bunch of problems for example, you get a puffy face and a stuffy nose, as if you have a bad cold, and you also get higher blood pressure and a lower heart rate, as if you're relaxing on a couch, and you may experience vision problems, as if you're wearing the wrong glasses. Many of these effects are reversible when you come back to Earth, but a few are not so lucky. Did you know that certain astronauts have lost their perfect eyesight after spending time in space? That's right, they came back with blurry vision that never got better. And that's not all, some studies have also hinted, and that's not all, some studies have also hinted that the fluid shift may mess up your brain as well, changing its structure and function in ways that could affect your mental health. And speaking of mental health, that's another big challenge for space travelers. Imagine being away from your family and friends for months or years, trapped in a tiny metal coffin with a few other people, coping with constant stress and danger, and having no natural rhythm or variation in your environment. How would that affect your mood, your motivation, your creativity, your memory? Well, according to some research, not very well. In fact, some astronauts have experienced depression, anxiety, insomnia, irritability, and even hallucinations during or after their space missions. To cope with these issues, astronauts need more than just a spacesuit. They need to have psychological support and training before, during, and after their missions. They also need to have regular communication with their loved ones and experts on Earth, as well as some fun and games in space. NASA better send them a PS5 with a Starship game in it, or maybe a VR headset that lets them pretend they're back on Earth. But even with all these measures in place, there's still a lot of mystery about how humans will adapt to long-term space exploration. That's why NASA has recently released a new decadal survey, which outlines the scientific priorities along with opportunities for the next 10 years in biological and physical sciences research in space. The survey has 11 big questions that need some answers if we want to keep our astronauts happy and healthy when they go far away from Earth. And let me tell you, the questions are fine, but some of the answers are so hilarious and rude. Did NASA forget to edit them? Or did they just give up on public opinion? Here are some of the questions and answers. How do we protect astronauts from the harmful effects of radiation in deep space? The answer is, we don't. We just hope they don't turn into mutants or zombies. How do we optimize nutrition and pharmacology for space travelers? Well, we feed them with pills and powders that taste like cardboard and make them drink recycled urine. How do we design habitats and vehicles that are comfortable and adaptable for humans in different environments? Let me think. Hmm. We simply copy the designs from sci-fi movies and hope they work. How do we enhance human performance and resilience in extreme conditions? Piece of cake. We train them like super soldiers and inject them with nanobots and steroids. All right, we have something to admit. We may have changed some of the answers from the NASA survey, but don't blame us, blame NASA. They should give less technical answers to questions. 
Seriously, who cares about fluid dynamics and pharmacokinetics? But hey, let's ignore NASA for now and zoom in on Elon Musk's SpaceX. How does SpaceX keep its astronauts from going nuts or falling apart on their wild rides? Here are some of the ways that SpaceX has handled the troubles and threats of space travel for its crew members. First of all, SpaceX claims that their spacecraft are comfortable and adaptable for humans in different environments. And who can doubt them when their CEO is Elon Musk, the real-life Iron Man? By the way, this term is getting old, we need to find another comparison. Anyway, SpaceX has two amazing spacecraft that can take humans to different places in space. Their Dragon capsule can fly astronauts to and from the ISS, and it has a lot of space, big windows, touchscreen controls, and a life support system that keeps you comfortable and alive. Their Starship rocket can carry humans and cargo to the moon, Mars and beyond. And it will have artificial gravity created by spinning the rocket, which will help prevent bone and muscle loss, fluid redistribution and other effects of microgravity. But how does SpaceX get the human body ready for these missions? Well, they have a tough and thorough program that involves physical, mental and technical training. SpaceX's crew members spend months of training at different places around the world. They get to feel the g-force in a spinning machine, practice what to do in case of emergencies in a simulator, learn how to use the spacecraft gadgets in a mock-up, and more. They also have to pass a health check to make sure they're fit and fine for space travel. So SpaceX is great, but I'll be realistic. It doesn't have a quarter of the experience that NASA has in space. So yeah, I think I went too far on NASA. Actually, NASA has been testing different ways to create artificial gravity for space missions, such as using centrifuges, tethers, or rotating habitats long before SpaceX. And NASA has to handle multiple problems. Their job area is broader. And still, look at what they've done for humanity so far. So I shouldn't get mad just because of a survey. I'm sorry, NASA. Well, as you can see, getting to Mars and beyond is not a walk in the park. It requires a lot of scientific knowledge, technological development, and human courage. But it also offers a lot of potential rewards, such as expanding our horizons, advancing our civilization, and discovering new worlds and life forms. And that's why NASA and SpaceX are so obsessed with it. But wait a second, they're not the only big players in the space race. Other giants such as India, China, and Russia are catching up. Yeah, maybe not Russia because their space journey ended pretty badly with the Luna 25 moon landing mission. Click here to watch the epic video about this epic failure. But hey, this is not a knock on Russia. They will come back stronger to the space race, no doubt. They have a long history of space exploration and achievements, and they're not giving up easily. Meanwhile, India was celebrating with joy because their Chandrayaan-3 mission was successful. The lander Vikram and the rover Pragyan perfectly landed on the moon's south pole, and India became the first country to land near the moon's south pole. Click here to watch this success story from a country that never gives up. It's amazing how they achieved this feat with a budget that's less than the cost of a Hollywood movie. Before you do that, I have something to tell you, and it might sound very cliche, but it's very important for the growth of the channel. Here it comes, three, two, one. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching, see you next time with more awesome space news.